This is the West Michigan Sports Show, presented by Daysos Digital. Now, here's your host, Brandon Worth. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the West Michigan Sports Show, presented by our great friends at Dezos Digital. Navigate your way through the digital wilderness with the experts of DezosDigital.com. It's yours truly, Brandon Worth, joining you here on this lovely August 10th weekend. What a beautiful weekend it is shaping out to be. we got temperatures dropping. We've got some cloud cover, but not too crazy as far as chilly temperatures. Man, it's a great weekend to be outside, but uh, we appreciate you still taking your time to join us here, whether you're listening live over 96.5, 107.7 over the airwaves of News Radio WBRN, virtual of our FM, as well as our 1460 AM stations. You can also stream this show on the go wherever you want to take this show via WBRN.com and the WBRN mobile app. Today on the program, we will be breaking down a little bit more of a talk show format, taking break of our previews. We'll get back to those next week. We got soccer as well as football coming up, as well as we'll dive a little bit into volleyball. Uh, but we'll get into those over the next couple weeks here. But today we have a great interview. We had a chance to chat uh, with a former Big Rapids Cardinal standout in three different sports, but specifically football, who is actually uh, reportedly on his way to Midland as the show is recording right now. That's Riley Venix, former standout quarterback who is going to be attending Northwood University uh, to be part of the Timberwolves football program. So very excited to see what he does. Uh, but we had a chance to sit down with him in our exclusive interview. Some of you might have seen it on YouTube, uh, but it was so good we wanted to air it on this show too, and I'll have a chance to break it down a little bit further with my experience. I know we've brought that up quite a bit on the show, uh, but we want to make sure that all of these athletes have the as much insight as they can, as much of the knowledge as they can grasp when they make these decisions, because these are life-altering decisions. Whether you think about it that way or not, the trajectory of your journey and career in sport is a lot on the process, so I feel like it's definitely worth talking about. So we'll get into that as well, um, as you'll get my insight as well on the interview, some of the things I like that Riley said, a lot of the goods, the bads, uh, the toughs, the easies, and everything in between. But it was a great interview, uh, and super glad to have Riley back on the show with us. Before we get there, we do want to take a chance and thank all of our great sponsors for being a part of our show family. And those other supporters include the Schuberg Insurance Agency, Quad Car and Truck Repair, Johnson's Automotive, Alta Care Big Rapids, Moda the Macasta Osceola Transit Authority, Paris Auto Sales and Service of Big Rapids, and the Macasta Osceola Career Center. Thank you for your support of local high school sports. And if you want to be a part of the Big Rapids Media Network and our local sports, be sure that you reach out to us. We got sports packages coming out really soon. So call us at the station, 796-7000, and get yourself on air when we got our football seasons coming up, all of our live coverage as well as our expansion of the rundown, which be announced very soon. I know you guys are waiting so anxiously. I know, I know. We're going to get it to you as soon as we can uh, for when it comes to all of our in-depth analysis coverage of CSAA football. It's going to be great, and we can't wait to get that too, as well as the broadcast teams, which should be announced in the near future. But we're going to get into the interview here, and especially with the interview, I wanted to be sure to, to say this up front. Uh, Riley came in uh, as a guy that I knew had a lot of talent, especially going into his high school career, and he was really uh, had a lot of expectations, and it was kind of set upon him due to uh, the prominence and success of his older brothers when it came to Cardinal Athletics. And Riley is a really hard worker. He really is a guy that you can see in the gym, on the field, in the practice facility almost constantly. He has worked for every ounce of success that he has got as a Cardinal. And we can't wait to see what he does as a Timberwolf. So I think this will really, really hit home for a lot of our athletes that are especially kind of seen with those expectations uh, going in due to their uprising in local youth sports, you know, catching some eyes. Oh, man, this kid, he's going to be pretty good when he gets to middle school and high school levels. Uh, but it doesn't matter where you're at there. You can still work harder. And I think Riley's a great example of that. So without further ado, let's get into a conversation now about his journey to the next level, the journey to college and how he made the decision to attend Northwood University. This is Riley Venix of Big Rapids Football. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a WBRN exclusive interview. Brandon Ward joined by All Area Athlete of the Year this past year. He's an all region football player as well as a district champion. Riley Venix joining yep. us. Riley, welcome. Yep. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So you are now heading to Midland actually in a few days from when we're recording this. Four days now. Are you excited to be a Timberwolf or what? Yeah, it's pretty exciting um, just to get there and then get on campus, you know. 
get rolling in football. A little nervous though for the first week, but those will go away. Yeah. What's the biggest thing that you're excited about when it comes to, you know, playing the dream? I know we chatted a little bit a while ago that that was the dream to play college football. Now you're going to be living it. How does that really get you excited? And what are the things you're looking forward to the most? Um, I'm really excited. I mean, I'm pretty pumped about just getting with the guys, interacting with all of them, finally connecting with them, living with them too, hanging around them 24-7 basically. And, um, yeah, I'm just excited to play. Uh, start start the season up. We should be pretty good this year. Went off like five and six last year. It'll be a second year with the head coach. So I think the guys are the, – the guys, like I think over half of them have stayed on campus in the summer and just been – interacting together been working out and i think it'll be good for sure looking back cardinal career fantastic career i'm sure many people have told you that and i'll tell you that up front too uh when it comes to your favorite memory i'm sure there's probably one that sticks out but what's been your favorite memory about everything that you got with big rapids high school your four years all the different sports that you played what were some of your favorite memories um i think Ever since I've been on varsity, it's been it's been a blast. You know, sophomore year I kind of got brought up and played a few games, and then junior year played slot, and guys were great. We had a great connection. Then we kind of lost first round playoffs to Whitehall, and then my senior year quarterback kind of stepped into that leadership role, and we went to the playoffs seven and two or seven and one, and we played Whitehall again. And we beat them in the district uh, finals. And I think that's one of the biggest memories that I've had or the best one that I've had. And um, just being them on like a last second play almost. And so, yeah, yeah, I just have to say Whitehall. For sure. Looking back, especially, I know you started this process going into this past year when it comes to looking at colleges, looking where you wanted to play. What was it that really kind of stuck out to you about the process or some of those things you were looking at as far as where you want to continue your education, where you wanted to compete athletics, as well as, you know, just have that overall experience uh, for you? What were some of those important things that you were looking for? Um, I'd have to say the culture, atmosphere and education were three of the biggest that I was considering for all sports schools that I was going to I had a couple of looks other d2 looks a lot of d3 looks but um I kind of the recruitment process I started around junior year didn't take it fully serious because I thought I had a whole bunch of time but it goes by fast so I definitely would recommend starting early and um I'd say just um reaching out to as many coaches as you can and uh researching uh the campus and stuff going as many and as many visits as you can. And then when I went to uh, Northwood on my visit, I just felt home there. Just find find a place where you feel home. And that's kind of where I felt home. And I just loved it there from the, from the get-go. Yeah. And when you were going through this process, many people, you know, look straight at, you know, getting into these giant portals, these networks, these third-party organizations to try to get yourself out there. But you took more of a direct route. Kind of talk about what method you use to be able to find some of these schools and uh, get on these visits and be able to have a lot of those opportunities to go on campus, see the team, and uh, see where you want to go from there. So it kind of started out with just re, uh, contacting coaches, contact as many coaches as possible. That's what I did at the start. You know, you're not going to get response, but if you just keep reaching out, you'll finally get some. And then I got some uh, D3 ones, and then I got some offers. And then that was kind of the start of it. Then I started reaching out D2, some D1, and um, had a lot of D2 responses, but uh, everybody wanted just to, me to come to a uh, visit and like uh, go on camp, go on a camp, um, like go on a camp and just play at their camp. And um, so, yeah, it was just kind of like that. And then once I went for a camp, um, we uh, kind of started from there. And then I kept on kept in contact with the coaches. Then I finally got some visits. And then I actually didn't get uh, reach out to Northwood until about the winter time. Kind of had some help from a uh, alum that went there, and he reached out to the coach. He helped me get on a uh, visit with them, talked to their head coach. He liked w- what he saw on film, and he liked me as a person. And I'm, 
I love the coaching staff there. So that's kind of how it started and then how it went from there. Yeah. You said D1 offers. Any looks from uh, Coach Smith or Coach Harbaugh down there, East Lansing, Ann Arbor? Oh, Not man. D1 offers, but oh, I okay. reached out to them. Yeah. Hey, yeah. those guys, you're missing out. This guy's a stud. More of the interview with Riley Venix coming up after these words from our sponsors on WBRN. At Dezos Digital, we're your guides through the digital wilderness, helping small businesses thrive amidst the complexities of the online world. Just like a forest ecosystem, the digital landscape can be vast and daunting, but with our expertise, we navigate through it, crafting tailored marketing and advertising strategies that resonate with your audience and drive tangible results. With a focus on precision and efficiency, we empower businesses to harness their full potential on digital platforms, ensuring growth and success in today's competitive market. Want more? Find out more at DezosDigital.com. Uh, especially for you being such a stud athlete, I'm sure you had different opportunities to, you know, maybe play other sports outside of football. Obviously, three sport athlete, you were fantastic. What was really about football that you knew? Yeah, that's the sport I want to go for. I want to play college football. Um, I kind of fell in love with football the most sophomore year, I'd say. And that's when I kind of decided I wanted to go play college football instead of basketball or um, f- uh, baseball. So that's kind of when it started to do football over those other two but basketball is great I mean I had fun but I just didn't love it that much and baseball I probably could have went somewhere for D- division two but um this this past senior year kind of put a stand to that with I mean I didn't play all senior my senior year for baseball and because of my back and that kind of made that solidify that I wanted to keep on playing football so yeah how important was it as well you had an older brother as well who may or may not be in the room with us right now that went through this process before I mean just having that be able to go to somebody be able to get a lot of that advice you know who are some of those people that really kind of helped you through the process um he went to college a while ago so I kind of forgot about all that kind of calling him old a little bit (laughs) yeah so um yeah he went to uh, Glen Oaks and um he had a good baseball year over there, a couple of years. So I kind of got a little feel of it when he went. I mean, I was younger, obviously, but I kind of kind of knew a little bit about it from that. And I'd say my parents helped a lot. And just other people that kind of went through the same process I've talked to a little bit about. So most of it, I mean, it was kind of on my own a little bit, just uh, doing some research and stuff and just then reaching out. What was the hardest part for the process for you when it comes to the whole grand scheme from A to B, start to finish? What was the hardest part? Um, definitely, I have to say, like, the mindset of just don't get discouraged. I got discouraged a lot because no one was re- responding back. But, you know, I mean, they, they obviously still see it, but they just don't respond back. So that's mm-hmm. kind of the biggest. I just was discouraged. That was probably the hardest part. And just don't, like, don't let those no response take away from like what what kind of person you are and like how great you've become and yeah so i'd have to say that yeah hardest part now easiest part what was the thing that probably came by the easiest for you maybe not as challenging maybe it was just because naturally you were better at it when it came to the easiest part of the process what was it for you as in like the recruitment process or like um easiest part don't want to say like film but like I had some good film, so that was kind of easy to put together and then send out. So I'd have to say that. And then just, I mean, just what was easiest was playing the sport football and just going on the long run that we had and just... I'd have to say that. Yeah, seems like the pretty easiest part of it. You know, yeah. play the game yeah, itself that you game. love for sure. Yeah. Riley, thank you so much for joining us. We'll leave you with one last question, especially for those that want to be in your shoes. They want to be at the college level. They want to be able to play college football, whatever sport it may be. What's the biggest advice you would leave to them uh, that you can kind of pass on and be able to say, you know, if you need help, like this is what you need to do if you want to get in my shoes? Um, I definitely just have to say work hard and just never stop going. I mean, you're obviously going to have bad days, some good days, but always keep going. Even when no one's looking at you, keep working in the dark. I mean, that's what I did the most. I just was always working at my craft and always getting better each and every day. And yeah, just don't let people bring you down because definitely you're going to have haters out there. And yeah, and I just say put God first and he'll lead you on the path that he wants you to lead. Absolutely. Yeah. Riley Venix, everybody standout Cardinal athlete heading to Midland to be a Northland Timberwolf this fall. Thank you so much for joining us.
Big thanks to Riley for joining us here on the show. So now kind of breaking it down, putting my own perspective, things that I heard from Riley that really stood out that I think a lot of people should definitely hear twice or three times after that interview is the number one thing that really stood out to me is Riley knew the schools that he was looking for and he didn't really beat around the bush. He went straight to the schools and got connections. I think that is one of the best ways to get recruited, period. If you know a school that you are starting to really kind of see as, you know, a potential future destination, you like the school, you like the offerings academically, athletically, you really shouldn't wait around to maybe hear if they would want you. Get the decision already made for you by reaching out and saying, hey, I want to be a part of your program. And a lot of times, the college coaches, especially the ones that I've interacted, they love when they get a recruitment questionnaire, an email. They love getting these inquiries that you are interested in their school. It really makes them feel good about you going to the school because you're passionate about it, right? There, There's a lot of things that come with you taking the time to reach out and finding those schools. It really does mean a lot at the end of the day. So I really did, a, really did like how Riley mentioned that he went straight with direct connections, that he got to the schools that he wanted to. He knew the connections. He knew people that went to the school. He learned about it. And, and that's what led to his visit, you know, because he had a lot of different offers in different schools that he was interested at the time. And he went straight to those schools, whether they're at the D2 level, whether they're at the D3 level, uh, and even reaching out to D1, he said, right? So there's a lot of these different opportunities for you at different levels. And sometimes you just need to know what the school is about. And the more that you learn and the more that you like, the more that you can plan ahead or, you know, go away from that school if you're if you're not interested, right? So I really like the direct connection thing because that is the, one of the number one ways that recruiting is obviously done nowadays. And I think people get a little bit oversaturated when it comes to looking at a lot of these recruitment websites, a lot of these third-party vendors that want to try to sell uh, your your student athlete uh, for them by making together a website. Uh, Those things are great, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's really a hard thing to do when when you're in a very small area like we are in West Michigan, right? There, it's not necessarily as useful as you may think. Now, when you go look go on these sites and you go around and you get a lot of these attention from national schools, it's great. But a lot of these schools in the West Michigan area aren't necessarily using as much technology, but as much word of mouth, right? There's a lot of connections made in Michigan amongst these college coaches. Not like there's not many made in the other areas, but some of these other schools that nationally are looking for a lot of these athletes, they're going on these websites because they are going against a lot of these big schools in their area, right? You look at schools in California, in Florida, where you have a lot of these colleges within 20, 30 miles of each other, and they got got to compete. They got to butt heads a little bit, right? Michigan is not necessarily as much the case, uh, but which especially when you're in West, when you're in the state of Michigan, especially central Michigan to northern Michigan, there's a really a wide open plane. So uh, there's a lot of really a lot, a lot of benefit from a lot of these direct connections. So I think that's the one thing. The second thing that I really liked that Riley said was that when he looked at the process, obviously he wasn't worried about playing football. And I think that's something that is really easy to say hard to be done because as one that went through a senior season where I knew there were scouts watching, I knew there was times that I needed to hit, there's a lot of pressure. But at the end of the day, the easiest part is just, just go out and play ball. You just go out and compete. Whatever it may be, whatever sports you're in, you have to have the ability to set that aside and go compete. That's the bottom line. So you have to be able to get rid of the uncontrollables. You can't control how the scout is going to think of you, whether you may think that or not based on the performance. You have to let that go. You have to put that aside and just enjoy the game or the competition or the sport that you love. That That's the bottom line. And I really like that he said that because... There's a lot of pressure when it comes to the realm of collegiate athletics and the idea of getting there no matter what it may take. And so I think that was something that really should speak to heart, even though it might not necessarily for all of our uh, college perspective athletes. I know that's hard for hard for me to say to you as one that was in my shoes and would shove that aside if I were hearing that myself and saying, you don't understand. But it truly is at the end of the day. That's the thing I truly wish from my last year of high school was not necessarily worrying about the numbers, but more just enjoying my last year with my teammates. I know I definitely did that, but I wish I would have even did it more just based on the level of stress and pressure that you can be on. The third thing that I think was really beneficial uh, from just the way that Riley was talking, not only with us on the air, but even beforehand, 
was you look at the opportunity that the program offers with a full scope, right? A lot of prospective athletes, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is wrong, okay? Don't hear that I'm saying that you should not go to a school that com- is competitive as a national contender. Don't hear me saying that because there is definitely really good things you can get out of it. But don't make that your only thing, right? I really like the way that Riley has approached his journey going to Northwood because he knows it's a school that was really, let me be frank, in the gutter a few years ago. This was a program that went through a full tilt rebuild, a full clean slate, and they've bounced back in a big way. And they really have some good foundational building blocks. They're in a tough conference in the GMAC with te- with really these prominent teams like Finley and Tiffin and Ashland. These are prominent football programs that they're going up against. So I really like the opportunity that he sees with Northwood that he can be a key contributor. He can be a guy that can be a leader, an impactful guy immediately in year one. And that might not necessarily mean if he gets the field or not. He still has a great opportunity, you know, where he might not necessarily be going to a school that could be necessarily redshirting him for two years, maybe even three years before he even sees the field, right? And he's just on scout team. I think he has a really good opportunity. And I really like the mindset that he was using, that this is a really good opportunity for me to grow immediately and get the most out of my college education in my four years. And I think that is something that is really cool. Don't get me wrong. You should not just pick a school because you're going to get playing time, and you should not just pick a school because you're going to get a ring, right? You have to look at the whole experience, and based on what Riley was telling me, with his aspirations, what he wants out of his athletic and his academic career, he's making a pretty good decision, I think, based on his knowledge, his common sense. I'll be excited to see where he goes, and I hope every college student athlete will be in that same situation where they know they're going to get the most out of their four or five years that they can possibly get as an athlete and as a student, because that's all that it really is at the end of the day, getting the most out of your college experience, especially with the hefty bills that go along with it. Big thanks to everybody for tuning in with us. Be sure to subscribe on the West Michigan Sports Show, Virtue of Spotify, Apple Podcasts, for all of our post-produced shows. You can also listen to WBRN.com. And we'll see you here next week. Big thanks to our sponsors. Big thanks to you. And we'll see you next week on August 17th, same time, same place, here on News Radio WBRN.